Okay, this is going to be a little bit different, but stick on me in this one. I have an idea, okay? Ratatouille has been a big part of my channel since November. I've loved watching all the creativity and the art come out of this one weird trend. And honestly, I was quite surprised to see it become an online concert. But honestly, this concert looked quite promising. The cast were almost perfect. I only have like one person in there that I think is miscast, but I'm not going to talk about that because I don't need to. I mean, the OG TikTok writers were on board. Uh, it was lining up to be really great. Then I watched it. I hate being negative. Even when I'm talking about something that I'm quite negative on, I always try and look on the bright side. Instead of phrasing it as this is terrible, I try and phrase it as this is something that they can do better. And I didn't want to add any negativity to it uh, because the concert achieved so much. I mean, two million dollars raised for charity. The cast, the songs, they were all still really good. And I didn't feel cheated out of my money at all. So I decided not to review it until I looked at the things I didn't really like. And I realized they all had one common element, a lack of time. This concert was put together in about six weeks, right? Now compare that to how long it takes to put on a full scale musical. Seven years on average. Like, you cannot compare these times. So, I was very sympathetic towards it for how quickly they put it together. But then I heard something, and that gave me this video idea. Someone on Twitter, I can't remember who, but someone on Twitter said it felt like a workshop. And I thought, yes, it does. And when you're doing a workshop, you're doing it to bring out an idea and to get advice back and to look forward to what you're doing next with this project. So that's what I'm going to do here. If we're going with the logic that this is a workshop, what's the constructive criticism? What does it need to improve? What did it do right? And what are the next steps for this show? So today I'm going to explore every avenue of what they can do. Look at some of the problems I felt that the Ratatouille musical had online and try to pitch a couple different ideas of what we can do with this amazing trend next. Now, if you bear with me for one second, I've got to advertise things. I'm so bad at advertising things. Look at this cool hoodie. This hoodie is leaving my merch store soon. So make sure you get it because otherwise you won't be able to get it. Ah. <laughs> also, I'm probably gonna uh, talk about my full thoughts on the musical uh, going into a massive in depth on my Patreon. So if you wanna help support what I'm doing, help pay for my very, very, very expensive editing software. Why is it so expensive? Uh, consider becoming a Patreon and going over to my Patreon to pledge, please. Or even just hit that like and subscribe. This is why I I never advertise anything. This is this is why I never do it. On onto the discussion. It is a very big discussion, and I feel like anything that I say in this video is just a suggestion. Theatre is what? Subjective, as we always say on this channel. And I think it's important that not every idea is always the right idea. And I'm going to be pitching several different ideas for the same problem in this video. And if you have any ideas of what the Ratatouille TikTok musical should do next, or little improvements, or things you really liked about the concert, let me know in the comments down below. So the concert was performed and rehearsed over Zoom. It's pretty clear from its presentation that that's how they did this. Now, we are currently in you know, these times. And of course, it wouldn't be fair to compare this to a full length production because there was a lot of things that they had to be wary of when performing theater in these times. <laughs> but I think it would be naive not to talk about the negative things that comes from doing a Zoom production. The main one being latency. Now, if you don't know what latency is, latency is a tech term and it is the little bit of a gap, the little pause between when you say something into a microphone and the other person hears it. There is natural latency in normal speak, but this is so really, 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 really small that you never notice it. But there is much more of a delay when you're talking into a microphone or a camera. And this can make scenes feel really awkward, especially when you're trying to get a quick pace of dialogue going or having an argument. There are ways to edit this out. This isn't really like a high tech thing to get rid of. It's quite easily edited out. But the Ratatouille musical didn't do this, most likely due to time restraints. They also made the bold decision of putting 
uh, applause breaks after nearly every song, which uh, works if you're having a party, watching it all together, which uh, if you did, please don't. You, you are, no, not at the moment. But they definitely don't work if you're sitting in your room alone at 12 a.m. in the morning. Now, we're not gonna look at the solution to fixing this in the concert, because that's not what we're here for today. We're here to look at moving forward. So what is the natural solution to this moving forwards? Well, I think it's quite simple. Film your concert in an empty theater. Every single theater on Broadway is empty right now. Every single one. There is so much space to work with at the moment. And this isn't even an impossibility given our current circumstances because over here in the UK we've done loads of online theatre that's been pre-filmed in empty theatres. We achieved this through mass testing of people but if you're filming a concert in one day and you know rehearsing over Zoom this shouldn't be too much of a problem you've only got to pay for the one test. You have slightly smaller casts which you can definitely do with a show like Ratatouille and source your actors from the New York area to avoid loads of people having to fly in. I think a negative of this would be the fact that it raises production prices. To be fair, if we're looking at these productions that we've done in the UK, none of them have been like overly expensive. I think rent was about £20 at the Hope Mill, but that was like a really small theatre. And we have Mischief Movie Night, which I think the price range is literally £10 to £15. So it isn't going to break the bank completely, but it would probably hike up expenses. But it's okay because we've now had the fundraiser, that's all done, that's okay, and we can now see this musical continue to develop and grow. And it would still probably be cheaper than literally any Broadway ticket. <laughs> or we could think a little bit further down the line. I have to deal with the harsh truth that I think it's way too optimistic to think this will eventually become a full-scale Broadway musical, because those take years to make. In seven years, the trend will be over. It's a hard one because you have to face the reality of the situation, which is internet trends don't last forever. But we also have to face the problem of who owns the intellectual property, and this is the bigger problem. Disney would most certainly intervene on this, and if they did send it to Broadway, they would probably get their own writers in and lyricists in. Disney have said they have no plans on adapting Ratatouille to the stage. This could change in the future but without Disney's permission, you cannot put this on. It may have been easier to get the rights for a short concert version done for charity than it would be for a full length production. I think another thing that really clearly needs to be worked on from this original concert version is the script. Now again, due to time restraints, the script was mostly narration, cut down to about an hour's long and was just Remy telling you what happened in the film. But if we're looking at what the show is trying to be, I don't think it's too fair to judge the script too much. It wasn't trying to be an amazing musical. It was just trying to be a celebration of these songs. And the script was mainly there to bridge the gap between these songs. But if we're trying to flesh out Ratatouille, this is something that really needs to be worked on. Film to musical adaptations are really hard to get right. You've got to be faithful to the film, but you've also got to prove why it's being turned into a musical. You've got to balance these two things and kind of hit a middle ground, which is so hard to hit. It's it's a feat that not every show gets right, and only a few shows like Heather's and Legally Blonde can really hit that balance. If I was to say whether it should be more faithful or less faithful, I think because the songs are so faithful to the original, I think the script has to kind of reflect this too. But again, this is just a suggestion. Now I'm going to talk about the songs for a second because they were definitely the strongest thing about this concert. But these songs also pose a problem for if you're trying to adapt this into a full thing. When you make a musical, you have one or two lyricists and songwriters working together to make a cohesive score that really works when you listen to it all together and watch the show all together. This allows songs to link, to have musical themes that carry over and over, and to have a clear direction. But Ratatouille doesn't have this. Every single musical number has come from a different songwriter with different ideas and different interpretations. There isn't really a clear cohesion with this. Now, this isn't to say that having multiple scriptwriters doesn't have any precedent in Broadway, because it does, if we look at the Spongebob musical. But the clear difference between Spongebob and Ratatouille is that Spongebob had a book writer and a director already attached 
before these songs were written. So that these people could go to these scriptwriters, give them the exact moment, exactly what they're looking for, and kind of good cohesion. And then they had a musical supervisor as well, Tom Kitt, who got all these songs together and made them fit in together, putting together the parts of the jigsaw, to use a metaphor, as you will, because I am fancy. This allowed it to gel, but the Ratatouille musical didn't have this. That's where the problem could come in the future. I'm gonna be real, this is one that I don't really have a clear solution for. You could pick just one person to write your music, but then you lose out on all these amazing songs and you're not supporting all these songwriters. But then if you've got a big team of songwriters together, again, you still have the problem of you still have to pick who and who, and you still have loads of suggestions that you've had to leave on the cutting room floor. But then you also have the added problem of that the songs might not gel as well together. And what's more, what if you worked up this show more and more and you realise that one of the songs doesn't really work as well. Do you completely cut that songwriter out? Do you continue to adapt the song? Do you get them to write a different song but maybe in a completely different style? It's, it's so unprecedented. It would take a lot of time and a lot of workshops to truly find the balance between this and to make sure that the script doesn't feel like it's just there for the songs. Ratatouille's next steps are complicated. If we want to look at this like it will eventually become a full thing, it is a complicated journey and will take a lot of time. But overall, I think this concert did prove something. I think it's great to see how accessible theatre can be. It's proved that, that theatre online can work. It's proved that TikTok and the internet are amazing places to find and scout young talent. And what's more, it's proved how our community can really come together. No matter where this show goes next, I hope that they can really take the time to make something amazing, a true reflection of what this trend was all about. Even if we don't get anything. I'm happy that this concert worked for a lot of people and raised so much money, even in such a bleak time and even if I didn't like it as much as I wanted to. And whatever happens next with the Ratatouille TikTok musical, hire me as your director. I, I made two videos on the wrong platform. I, I don't know why I wasn't hired. I mean, I had so many great ideas. I wanted no dance breaks at all. I don't know why I wasn't hired. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please remember to hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out and helps me continue what I'm doing. Remember that the Remy the Musical merch leaves the merch store soon and pledge to Patreon if you want more content. Woo, I'm bad at advertising myself. On screen right now are some links to some of my other videos. Don't they look so cool and fun and you just want to click them and watch them? But that's it for me today. I've got to go and pledge my allegiance to the rat of all my dreams. Bye.